today on Divorce Court. I want your leader to know that I'm a changed man, that I'm not cheating anymore. I'm strictly here for her. I'm willing to show her and get back on the right track. I really want to save our marriage. Right now, he wants to save the marriage, and I don't. He can't keep it in his pants. I don't want to be his wife. He doesn't deserve me. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Shalita Reynolds and Ronnell Reynolds. The two of you have been together for eight years, married for three. Mrs. Reynolds, you are done, and you want out. And Mr. Reynolds, you're hoping to save this thing. So I'm going to start with you, Mrs. Reynolds. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why you've brought your husband to divorce court today? My husband is a cheater and a liar, and... I'm, like, really done. You're done with it? Yes. Well, give me a little background on the relationship. Tell me how this thing got started, and then we'll go on from there. So we met in um, a salon. I was getting my hair fixed. And he walked in, and he kissed one of the workers there. I guess that was his girlfriend. Um, he um, had just got back from somewhere. He was selling things. And the girls kept saying... So you the dude in the beauty shop coming in with purses and scarves and stuff? Baby yeah, boy. I know. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, Baby so boy. <laughs> he, um... The girl kept... The ladies kept sending him back out to get more stuff. And they were stealing from him. So I spoke up and said, you know, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. He's trying to make it and y'all stealing from him. And one of the ladies said, shut up, B. Mm. And um, I said, I'm going to show you how a bee from New Orleans do it. So I went outside and told him. I told him, I said, you know, hey, they're stealing from you. And he was like, good looking out, you know. Mm -hmm. And I exchanged numbers with him that day, and I bought some stuff from him, and I remained a loyal customer. <laughs> Real loyal. Uh, <laughs> uh, when did... When, when did uh, you got married... How long after that did you become a couple? It was a long time. A long time? Yes. Would you have to chase her? Um, at the time, it was like in 99 when I met her. Uh-huh. And we was, we was basically just friends because she was a good customer, uh -huh. a loyal customer. And at the time, she was married to somebody else. Oh, so yeah. So I didn't, I didn't want to come in between that, you know? Right now. So I just let them do their thing and then... You know, if it was meant to be, it was gonna happen. So when that thing was over... Well, she got with somebody else then, after that. Okay. And then All right. All after right. that was over, then we... Then y'all got together. Yeah, so. Okay, I want to get to the marriage part. Right. What's going wrong, Mrs. Reynolds? What's going wrong is my husband can't keep it in his pants. He's cheating on you. Yes. Can you give me any evidence thereof? The first incident of cheating, he um, butt dialed me, and he was in the car, in my car. How long months, had you been married when Three this months. Happened? You've been married three months, mm -hmm. okay. And he accidentally butt dialed you in the car. Yes. And what happened? What I, did you hear? I heard him begging a girl for fellatio. Mr. Reynolds, did that occur? I'm not gonna say it didn't. But I'm gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna say, um, I didn't butt dial her. It was kind of like hooked up to the Bluetooth, and I guess she accidentally called me. And once it's hooked up to the Bluetooth, it automatically answers. But I didn't what know. What difference was... does that make? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to understand. The problem was you were asking someone else to to service you. Don't you see that as a problem three months yes, into marriage? Yes, ma'am. What did you say to him when you when he got home? I s no. He the conversation lasted four or five minutes. I listened to everything. And he must have noticed I was on the phone. And he started to change the subject. And then he said, Hello. I said, Oh, you want fellatio, huh? I know you didn't use that word. No. I didn't. I'm being nice. I, I appreciate it, too. <laughs> I appreciate it. When's the next time that he cheated? Um, he cheated again. He got a red light ticket or something for running a light. Um, and he tried to hide it, and I found out about it. There was a person in a picture with their face blurted out. 
And he tried to tell me that that wasn't a person, like I'm dumb, you know? <laughs> and I'm looking at it. This person is leaning back in the seat, you know? It's 1 a.m. in the morning. He said the person wanted to buy a belt and a wallet. Who shops at 1 o'clock in the morning? Mr. Reynolds, you want to respond to that? Um, yes. Um, what happened was the person had called me and they wanted some stuff for they do. So I came and met them. Um, remind you, when she said all this happened, she was at the hospital. So when I left the hospital, I went to go meet the person. And, you know, they wanted some stuff. They didn't have the right amount of money left, in the, I guess, in their pocketbook or whatever. So they wanted me to take them to the ATM. So I took them to the ATM. Mm -hmm. And at the time, when I took them to the ATM, I didn't know nothing about the area where I was at. And, and he got a ticket. I was, yes, uh, yes. Okay. No. Any, any other ass incidents you want to tell me about? That this incident, he forwarded the house phone to his cell phone, so I can think he was at home. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. Reynolds, I don't think you're smart enough to get anything uh, over no, on this I, woman. She's got, she, you know, uh, the, the I mean, stuff you, know, you do is, is is so so blatant and out there. You, you know, you don't have any choice but to get caught. Oh, uh, I mean. I know I'm not the smartest person, but I also understand that what I did was kind of wrong. And kinda? Of, well, I mean, not kinda, but, you know, I know that it was wrong. And I know that she was right and most of, the, most of the time when she said it. And some of the times it was kind of, like, not right, too. Because, like, sometimes she kind of be on a little jealous side because I didn't did some stuff in the past. So. Yeah, but, but but you gotta own that. You oh, yeah, bought I, that with your yeah, behavior. Yeah, I did. I, right, I, I yeah, did do you it. Know, so if she's jealous, she got good reason to be. Right, Every right. once in a while, you know, she doesn't mm. have direct evidence. Mm. But um, any more? Yes, he um, cheated. He decided to move to Los Angeles, and I agreed. And it was gonna be a fresh start. We was gonna put all the cheating behind us, and. We moved out here, and nine months later, some girl calls my phone. And she's like, hello, I'm his girlfriend. And I'm like, he can't have a girlfriend because he's married. She said, well, I'm his girlfriend, and I'm pregnant. Did that happen? That did happen. <laughs> <laughs> How You've been putting up with this for three years. Yes. But no longer. No longer. I understand, too, that the two of you have some issues about your son. Yes. Is that right? Mm hmm So I, I want to switch topics now, because it's pretty clear what that situation is about, and talk about why you two have issues about your son. I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're only going to be here for maybe six months. You invited them there. I invited them there. She didn't want them there. And then. They once they there. got there, now you want them out and she wants them to stay. Exactly. But I explained to him, once they get here, they, they're not leaving until they get on his feet. He agreed. Like, he agrees to so many things and then goes back on his word. Uh, your son is 24, correct? Yes. And he still lives at home. Yes, he moved back. And, and you want him out. Yes. Uh, tell me what the issue is. I just feel like he needs to, you know. Be on his own. He's 24, own. he needs yeah. to get out of the house. Yeah, she needs to stop, you know, pampering him and babying him or whatever. How does, how does she baby him? Well, I can tell her something about what he done did in the house and she thinking I'm picking on him. And I be telling her all the time, I'm not picking on him. I'm, I'm just pointing out the issues what I think is wrong in the house. I, I mean, you know, we both pay the bills in the house. So, I, I mean, I should at least have a, a say-so, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not always, you know, afraid to tell her something because I think she's going to get mad about it, you know what I'm saying? So I try to tell her sometimes and she go all off the hinges on it. Okay. So sometimes I don't even discuss it with her about what's going on in the house with him, you know what I'm saying? I just leave it alone, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Until it kind of, like, builds up, you know what I'm saying? Then, 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 then you out about it. Yeah, exactly. Mrs. Reynolds, why is your 24-year-old son still at the house? Or has, why has he come back? So he moved to Houston, and he lived out there for, like, four years. Mm -hmm. And he's getting on his feet, but he also has seizures. That's something new. Mm. So he's on medication. He's on my insurance, and he's getting diagnosed and treated. And once that happens, once he's six months free 
of no seizures, then he, he, won't, can... he, he won't be under, you know, so much supervision by the doctor. Right. So, um, my son is very respectful, you know, and he stays out of his way. He tiptoes around him because he knows he doesn't want him there. He you knows... know, the boy is sick. How, how can you feel that he ought not be there because He's having seizures. He can't live on his own. He's got to have somebody to look after him. Well, I have no problem with that. I, I mean, he got sick before when I was there and she was at work. And he had like two seizures. I picked him up, threw him in my van, and rushed him to the ER. You know what I'm saying? And when he got to the ER, they gave him some medicine. He had some more seizures. And then, yeah, you know, so, she... yeah, okay, I, and, and that's a good thing right. that you did that. Right. But my question is, what's the issue? You, 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 you seem... Unhappy that he's there. I think he wants me to himself. He no, don't no. want nobody. It's there. not. It's not even that. I think when they first got, when they first got there, because he was, he came when he first came. He didn't just come by himself. He came with his girlfriend too. So when they first came, it was kind of like, you know, I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're only gonna be here for maybe six months, maybe a little bit longer. You invited them there. Yeah, but at the same time, you you didn't want them there either. I didn't. So it's like it's, it's like a catch-22, you know what I'm saying? I invited them there. She didn't want them there. And then they Once come they there. Once they got there, now you want them out and she wants them to stay. Exactly. But I explained to him, once they get here, they, they're not leaving till they get on his feet. He agreed. Like, he agrees to so many things and then goes back on his word. When it becomes inconvenient yes. for him. It, it, didn't, it didn't come inconvenient for me. It just, once I start seeing that, you know, he wasn't out, trying to get a job or trying to, you So know, you think he's malingering? You think he's just... Me, to, to me, personally, I was looking at it like he's just using his mama, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, a crutch. But if you know he's having saying? seizures, wouldn't that be but difficult to before, get a job? I'm, what, what I'm saying is, before, he wasn't having no seizures. Even when he was in Houston, if he was having seizures, he still had that under control. He had like three, four jobs when he was in Houston. So why so you, you come so you here... you think he's bumming off of your... Right. I'm like, why you come here now you don't even got a job, not one job, you know what I'm saying? Do so... you work? No, I don't work, but I still go out there and make sure we get money for the house. I'm his mama, I'm his hostage, I'm the maid, I'm the cook, I'm the booty giver. Come on, do something. What do you do for her? Um, I go make sure that the bills is paid. Do you think Shalita gave Ronnell too many second chances after his first cheat? Tell us what you think at facebook.com slash divorce court. Divorce court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Divorce Court. Mrs. Reynolds, you say that Mr. Reynolds has a lack of compassion for you, that he's not kind and caring and loving. Why don't you explain what you meant by that? My husband does not show me love. He says he's sorry, but then he doesn't show sorriness. Mm -hmm. You know, so he wants me he wants me to believe he's sorry and just get on with it. Like right. I said I'm sorry. How many times I have to say I'm sorry? <laughs> you know, and that's not good enough. You know, when you're sorry there's a deed in there cuz the Bible says when a man is righteous the woman shall follow. He is not righteous. Mr. Reynolds, you do understand that when you hurt somebody by continually cheating on them, you owe them a lot more than I'm sorry. Have you been unable to deliver? Oh, I tried, but at the same time, she keeps nagging me about it. I mean, we can be watching you in the bed, and you come on, boom. She go into her little singing um, song, and she start re reminiscing like Mary J. Blige. I do. You know? And... Sometimes I just have to get up and I'll Have you leave done the house. anything to heal her? I, have, you, have you shown contrition? Have you, you had any acts of, I try, of love? I, that... I try to show her all kind of stuff. I try to, you know, um, stay at home with her, you know, um, comfort her, um, you know. Well, she says you, you know, have a very uh, crass way of seeking love. Making. It's not even that. It's just sometimes. Well, she says it is. Well, it's, it's not. It's like sometimes when I try to, um, 
you know, caress her or hold her or something, and she might catch an attitude or something. So I'd be like, oh, well, it's no use for me to so try to... So you just give her directions? No, I don't give her directions. He does. I Mrs. Don't. Reynolds, he gives why don't you tell me how, he how it goes? He gives me directions. What does know? he say? What does he do? Uh... You come get our daddy, you know, I'm like, that's not romantic. Don't pull on me. Don't grab on me. You know, that's not romance, especially after what you do me. That I cannot warm up to him. It's not like a warm feeling. You know, when I was in the hospital and I had my spinal surgery, that's when he had the red light ticket. I mean, why are you out at 1 o'clock in the morning when you should be at the hospital with me? It's like he has no compassion for nothing. <laughs> So, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, there's there's no deed in the sorriness. Yes, yeah, it's... and he just, he's got you with his wife. He's installed in the house. Yeah, I'm a hostage. Yeah. I'm, and I'm his there's hostage. no love in it. I'm his mama, I'm his hostage, I'm the maid, I'm the cook, I'm the booty giver. Come on, do something. What do you do for her? Um, I go make sure that the bills is paid. Mm-hmm. Aren't you the primary breadwinner? I have a job. And my job takes out retirement. It takes out insurance in case something happens to him. He's on my insurance, everything. So my job is the primary source. Of income. Yes, it's what Do you cook and clean around the house that she's the primary source of income? It's it's been many a times where she um, was at work and I, you know, I pull out the grill, I put um, some ribs, some chicken, links, all kinds of stuff. There's been many a times or is that the Three constant times. state of affairs. Three times. I, because I if one person's out working, the one at home has to I, put out a meal every night. I don't get home all the time. That's the whole thing about it. So if I am at home, I'll, I'll do what I can for her. You know what I'm saying? I'll do what I can. That means you're not doing much at all. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. What does Ronell need to do first to keep Shalita from leaving him? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Now, Mrs. Reynolds, I'm having trouble figuring out how you got hooked up with him in the first place. He showed me a softer side of him. He did. And that's the side I liked. And plus, he's fun. I don't hate him. I don't dislike him. I love him to pieces. I just want him to get his stuff together. I want him to deserve me. Mr. Reynolds, what would you change if she didn't leave? I change everything. That's meaningless. And when I... Say something definitive. What I mean by I'll change everything is I'll change the way I approach her the way I talk to her, the way I act towards her. I show her more love, more compassion. You know, everything that she want, I would mm-hmm. basically give it to her. You know what I'm saying? Because I see all the stuff I did before, that's not working. So it's time to try something different. And that's the reason why I'm here right now, so I, I can try you. something different. Mrs. Reynolds, let me say this to you. It, in, it, is, it has been my experience that dudes are very very contrite that sell they do anything when you first put that first foot out the door. But as soon as you slide it back, they backslide. If I were you, I would keep it moving. You've got a job. You're the stable one. Move on. Step on. He's hurt you enough. <laughs> maybe one day, maybe one day when he grows a heart, maybe one day when he becomes a better person, maybe one day when he can think of other people before himself, he might be able to crawl to you and beg for you and jump through some hoops for you. But until he does that, I wouldn't have any holler for him at all. Step forward, step on, and this matter is adjourned.